everyone, this is Rachel, and today I am doing the mid-year freakout book tag. I saw some other people doing it and it looked like fun, and as always, um, Made Between the Pages says that anybody who wants to do it to go ahead and do it. So I haven't been officially tagged by anybody other than I am just taking the initiative. The first thing I thought of when I heard the mid-year freakout was I was thinking of my Goodreads goal. I was a little unrealistic when I said it. I, I'm i pretty sure I said it for 158, which is how many was tagged as my currently reading on my Goodreads account. Because what I do is when I, I, I read a lot of library books and when I have to take them back, I, because I know, blah, 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 blah. okay, so I read a lot of library books and I don't always get them finished before I need to take them back but I know if I want to keep reading them, I mark them as currently reading and the page number, and then I return them. So that's why I have so many currently reading on Goodreads and I don't always get back to them very quickly. And so that was my goal was to work on getting that number down. But of course I've done a lot more different reading. I mean, there's been books here and there that have come off my Goodreads like to be read list, but not so much my currently reading list quite yet. So that was my first thought when I was thinking of the mid-year freak out, because I'm like, ah, my Goodreads says like I'm 37 books behind. Yeah, I think I might, you know, work on some of those manga series that I've been needing to finish to kind of boost that up. I also have some short stories that, or novellas, novelettes, um, for the Hugo still to read, which will help with that as well. Hopefully, I will get at least 100 books this year. I mean, 100 is pretty doable for me, but we'll see. So on to the questions. The first question is, best book you've read so far in 2020? And since I'm filming this in June still, I'm cheating a little bit. Uh, my answer is Getting the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Mur. I'm not sure how to say that. I haven't quite finished it. My goal is to finish it today, but this is a book that has completely blown me away. Um, necromancers aren't a trope that I really am interested in, or like a character that I'm interested in. And so I was skeptical about reading this, even like the first chapter, I was like, okay, but man, Gideon and these other characters have blown me away. and. If my husband didn't interrupt me, you know, when I was reading, I probably would not have put it down or to do anything else this week. So that has been the best book so far. The best sequel I've read so far in 2020 is Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. Um, I just was introduced to the First Law tr Trilogy this year by watching Murphy Napier's channel. And so I, that's why I started picking it up and I really enjoyed. And so actually getting the ninth beat out before they were hanged for the best book so far this year. So sorry, that was question number two. Two. <laughs> uh, so number three, a new release that I haven't read yet but want to, and that would be Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I read Aurora Rising in December, and I really enjoyed it. And so I had marked it, I had looked up and marked it of when it came out, and it came out in May. I just haven't gotten it yet. And I'm sorry, if you see me kind of like rocking back and forth, I am in a rocking, like not a, like I'm in an office chair that goes back and forth, and I can't quite help myself. I like the movement, it's very comforting. So I apologize if that's bothering you. Okay, so number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I have said this multiple times, but it's Savage Legion by Matt Wallace. I listened to a podcast that he and Mer Lafferty do called Ditch Diggers. It's talking about the business of writing because eventually that's like my dream job is to be a writer. I just have to finish writing and then try to get it published. And I haven't decided if I am going to go traditional, self-published, or hybrid and do both. But yeah, so I've, I've heard about this book for over a year now, because um, with the, in the publishing world, it takes them longer to do what, or it takes them longer to do young adult books, and so he has been talking about it for a while, and so I'm very excited. And this is to be published in July, so 
I will hopefully be reading it in August. Number five, The Biggest Disappointment. So I've only had one DNF this year, and that is this book. It's Paranormalcy by Kirsten White. The premise was more, or the, you know, synopsis on the back was more interesting than when I actually started reading the book. So as I've said before in other videos, I don't mind spoilers because my, the way I read is if I start reading a book and I'm not sure if I like it, I skip and read the ending and then I decide do I want to continue reading to find out how they got to that ending. And with Paranormalcy, I just, no, I wasn't interested. It wasn't for me. So six, my biggest surprise, and that book was Vida Nostra by Marina and Sergei Dynacheko, and I hope I said that right. Um, they are a couple, a Ukrainian couple who write in Russian, and I got this book on a Goodreads giveaway, and I got the English translated version on Kindle. And yeah, I, I guess I was really surprised. I don't. I don't know why I was really surprised about it, but I started reading it and I had heard it kind of hyped as an adult Harry Potter, because it's a girl who goes to a magical school, is the premise, but it's a very adult book. Um, some of the things that she's asked to do are kind of bizarre and you're kind of going, what on earth? But as I push through that, yeah, and so that's where it kind of takes a veer off from Harry Potter. It's not the lovable, oh, magic. Uh, the school they go to, there's a lot, like, all the student body have, like, questions like, why were we chosen? Why are we here? No one understands. Like, that first group, no one understands. And so it covers her first three years of college. And the concepts that were brought up in this book, I think that is really what blew me away. And I don't want to give any more details than that for those who don't like spoilers. <laughs> Number seven, favorite new author in its debut or new to me. So an author that was new to me was P. Jelly Clark, and I found him through The Haunting of Tramcar 015, and as soon as I read that, I got everything else I could from the library, and I read his novella, the other novella on tour, which, so the novella on tour is A Dead Gen in Cairo, which is the companion novel to The Haunting of Tramcar 015, and then the other book I read was the uh, Black God's Drums, which is, I would kind of say like a steampunk in New Orleans, which it was just really great. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to this fall. He has a new book coming out called Ring Shout, and that is definitely on my list as well. So number eight, newest fictional crush. Now for all the books that I've read that I've really enjoyed, I can't say that I would want to date any of them. Uh, so looking at all of them, my the character that I think is most similar to my husband would be Nathaniel York and Mary Robinette Cowell's uh, book, The Calculating Stars. I know I've seen a lot of community members, I've seen a lot of people writing reviews saying he's totally unrealistic, he's just too supportive, and I'm like, but that's my husband. That's how he is for me. So... I completely disagree with all those people who are bashing him. He is an amazing character. And I just want to say, and Mary Robinette Cowell is also known to ha to write um, stable re relationships in her books. Like, a happy marriage is always what she goes for. That's a trope that she always puts in her book, or almost always. Somebody is in a happy, committed marriage. And so the main characters aren't the only one. There's several happy committed marriages and they have she has other things as well but she's that's just a trope that she is known for and she knows that she's known for it so number nine newest favorite character now this was hard so while I would not have a crush on many of the characters I read I liked a lot of them I I have been very happy to read a lot of people this year who have had wonderful characters and so it was this was a really tough choice for me and I cheated and I went with two so I did Logan Ninefingers from Joe Abercrombie's series and Gideon Nav from Gideon the Ninth. Number 10, a book that made you cry. And none of them have made me cry so far this year, so sorry. I'm not usually a big crier when I read. That's not something I look for. Number 11, a book that made you happy. 
and looking through the books that I had read for this year so far, um, I would have to say it's The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. This is a complete comfort read for me, and it always makes me happy when I read it. Number 12, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. As I've talked before, I mostly use the library, but this was the year that I finally went and bought two books. I bought a book that I had previously read and knew I wanted to own, and then I bought a book I had not read yet and come out this year. And so The City We Became by N.K. Jemison, that is the prettiest cover of a book that I have purchased so far this year. Number 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So the only goal for books, like specific books, are I still want to finish the Nebula nominations and the books from the Hugo nominations, because I just like seeing what people, what my contemporaries are interested in. I know the Nebulas are voted on by science fiction fantasy authors, but the Hugos are voted on by the normal public. Some people are authors, but most of the people who vote for those are readers. So for me, it's very interesting to see what the general worldwide readership thinks. I have also am putting the link for the original creator for this tag. This is really fun. And I think I'm going to do it next year as well. I would love to hear if what your answers were. You can go ahead and write them down below. Have a great day. Bye.